Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to another week, another tutorial, it's tutorial time. Um, Blarney Castle this week, yes? I'm going to show you about painting lights and darks on the building. Um, and creating some nice trees as well. So yeah, let's do that. Let me turn the camera around and I want to show you my dogs. Okay, let's have a look. Now, these are my new dog, well, this is Milo, he's only a couple of months old, and Bella. Say hi Bella. He's going for a walk. You see? Bella knows what that means alright, don't you? Yeah. And that's Milo, he's a troublemaker of the house. He's the one that you can hear barking constantly in the background and uh, making noise and having fun. You see? So that's Milo and Bella. And uh, yeah, they're a great company for around the house, they really are. So um, anyway, look, let's go and paint a tutorial, Blarney Castle. This is my humble abode and this is my studio. Okay, a small little glorified shed. Um, just something simple, but it does the job. And that's why I make my frames. There we go. My humble abode, my studio. You can see all my work of art, my works of art. There. Got the a small rose I painted. Just a bit of fun, a bit of practice. Now, we're not going to have much peace with these two, are we? So I think I'm going to have to lock these two inside the house or around the side gate or something like that. And um, yeah. I'll hook my, um, hook my camcorder up to this device here, this strange looking thing, and uh, we got painting. Okay, Blarney Castle. Uh, I already have it on my tablet here, ready to go. Um, 16 by 12 canvas, and big selection of brushes there, look. My box next to me, with my paint, some turpentine, um, I ordered the drawing on that from a previous sketch I was going to do, but I took it off as best I could. But we, we go over that. Um, yeah, so that's it. Some nice paintings. Nice little lighthouse there. That's one we already done, I think. Um, and that's Dingle, the Ring of Kerry. That's a very, very big painting, isn't it? Um, I must try and find somewhere to hang it. A nice cafe or somewhere, a restaurant perhaps. But we could do something like that as well, sometime. A slightly bigger painting. Um, yeah, if I could try and shift this one now I would make room for another big one. So, um, yes. So that's the plan. Anyway, uh, Blarney Castle, let's do this. Let's have a bit of fun painting this. Get some nice colourful trees. Eh? I'll show you about mixing greens, okay? So don't go anywhere. Okay, so here we are. Let's have a bit of fun with this. Um, I'm going to put my colours out for you. I have a little white there already. So I'm going to put some. Uh, let's try a little Naples yellow. I won't use a whole lot of that this week. I'll take out some cadmium yellow pale hue. Cadmium yellow pale hue. And there's lots of different variations of yellows. So be careful, just double check the um, description on the tube. I'll take a little touch of burnt cyanide, and these are Georgian um, and Winton and Newton oil colour. So one type is Windsor and Newton, you can see it there, Windsor and Newton, okay, Winton oil colour, and a nice thick, thick greeny colours. The other type is Georgian, okay, Georgian oil, and these are the same, they're lovely thick colours, and they give me the best results. Um, okay, burnt cyanide. Put some of that on our palette. And let's take some burnt umber. A little burnt umber. And let's take a little cobalt blue. Only for the sky. I don't use blues much when painting greens, I'll be honest. I prefer to use black because it's a richer, more earthy kind of a green. But, um, now, let me see yep let's take a bit of black down look I'll put the black separate just so we don't get mixed up with these dark colours because it has happened in the past believe it or not and finally 
Hmm. I'm thinking a touch of cadmium red only to make the shadows on the castle. That's all. Or a bit of crimson, whichever you prefer to use. Either one is fine. Now, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Right, sketch time. So you can see all these colours I'm okay and I will put these up on the screen as well in writing so you can see the name of the colours. So sketch. Now, you should see the picture on your screen also and that's Blarney Castle. A lovely simple view of Blarney Castle. So I'm going to start by putting, now this is a 12, uh, 16 by 12 canvas. I'm using stretched canvas this time. Okay? A nice stretched canvas. Um, just for a change. Nice to use it for a change. I had it there, so I said, look, why not use it? And it's primed with a coat of primer. My own homemade primer. Uh, just so I'll do fine as well. So, let's move on. Um, a little horizon line, what I would call a horizon line, around here. A little squiggly line there. The castle, uh, we have some bushes coming up on this side, look, like that. Little squiggle there, a couple along the front, a couple coming up like that, higher and higher and higher. Then we have the castle. So I'll start with the castle here. Very, very rough lines, look, just like that. Uh, across here, like so. Let's make this now nice and wide. Say around here. And then we have a little piece that comes along the back here, which is in shadow, like so. And we have a piece then in front of it also. I won't worry too much about that. Um, that can all be put in later. And a piece here as well. It's just a very rough guide, that's all. Don't worry too much about getting these drawings perfect, because we're going to paint over a lot of this anyway. Right, that's it. Um, Green stubby brush, my now famous green stubby brush, I tell you something, the makers of this should be looking after me because they're promoting all their stuff, I tried contacting them but I got no reply, but anyway, green stubby brush, um, if you're looking for these, I have them in stock if you want some of them, just email me at stephenconway12 at gmail.com and I'll get some to you, they're fantastic because you can put them in the cup of your hand like this you see, and they can be very flexible with them and when they wear down like this they're fantastic for trees I'll show you in a minute so green stubby brush or any old flat brush that you have whatever you prefer to use if you want to use something like that you can that's absolutely fine as well pretty much the same um, synthetic here okay soft synthetic that's what I use let's dip this in the turpentine very gently dip it in so it's now soaking wet and then I'm going to just dab it on some tissue lightly and let's take some blue for the sky cobalt and some titanium white and the titanium white then will thicken this up very quickly you see now we have a nice light blue well that's a bit bright for me let's add some more to it so it's nice and creamy it's a little on the watery side but then the white will thicken it, you see. So we want a thin kind of a creamy consistency for this. Let's just try this here now. See, it's a little watery, so I'll put more white into this. And a little touch more blue. So I'll keep going until I get the consistency that I want. And it's not too thin, but it's not like a watercolour then either. Okay. Just go around the castle very. Isn't that annoying? You know, that board is twisted, look, and it's making an awful racket. Isn't that so? That, that will annoy me. That's one of the things that gets on my nerves. Little things like that. I know I'm talking silly now, but it is. It just gets on my nerves. Okay. Let's just fill this in. Now, because my brother's brush is quite wet, I'm just taking white on its own. Okay? And I'm pushing that into the blue. 
soften that right across. So what you want is just basically a light blue on your canvas. Let me get some more white here. And how about we change it up a little? How about we don't copy the photograph exactly? How about we put some nice clouds in there? What about that? Now take some blue and I'm going to go with a hint of black. Just a hint. So it's a bluey kind of a grey, isn't it? And from the top down, soften that all the way in there. So the sky is now getting slightly darker as it comes down. As it starts from the top, it's getting darker and it gets lighter and lighter as it comes down. Okay? And big brush strokes right across, look. Now, um, okay, we can leave it at that. Give this a good dry on our tissue, just get that paint off. And let's switch brushes. Now, look at these, look at all these. I'll go with something like that for a cloud look. So number four, a very worn flat brush. I'll go for something like that. And so looking at the photograph, our shadow is on the right hand side, isn't it? So the sun is going to come down from the left. So if you have a shadow on one thing in your painting, then everything else will have to have the shadow on the same side. Okay? So you can see because the light is coming from the left, all the trees have light foliage on the left hand side okay now some of these probably are on the right hand side depending on how the sun might catch them but that's the general rule anyhow so let's get some cloud in now what i want to do is just lighten this slightly it's a little dark just at the bottom so i'm taking some white and i'm going to just pop some white in there down at the end just to lighten it you don't have to do this if you don't like but I want a nice contrast between the trees and the sky you see afterwards. So a dark against light. That's what I that's what I'm hoping to achieve anyhow. Okay, that'll do fine. Um I'll show you nice simple clouds, okay? So we have a light and a shadow on the clouds. Let me just roll my sleeve up here and I'm gonna take a nice bright sunlit kind of a colour so you could just go with pure white if you want but I'm going to take um, a touch of red cadmium red or crimson if you have it and I'm going to take a touch of Naples yellow now you want a very dry brush for this and then a good good dollop of white into that and this will make the, the light side of the cloud so, there we go. Little circular movements. There we are. And something I think is worth mentioning with this also is um, have more red in your mix than, ye than yellow. Because if you have more yellow in the mix, it'll start going green, you see, with the blue. So that's why I intentionally put a little more red into that. So it's only just a touch of Naples. But it's more of a kind of a pink. Do you understand? A kind of a pinky kind of a salmon colour. So that's one cloud there. And let's add another one. Small one coming down here from this side. And I'm kind of just flicking the brush around there, look in all directions. Give it a quick clean to get that dirty blue off. Then go back into the colour again. And let's put one or two small ones off in the distance there, okay? There. So with the same brush, give it a dry on your tissue. I'm just giving it a quick rub on my tissue. So it's not spotless, okay? Let's make up a nice shadow colour for this. So let's take some cobalt blue and some red. 
little dab of red. So what I do first is go for kind of a plum colour. Then I add a touch of burnt umber to that. Just a touch. Now you can lighten it or darken it if you like. I'm going to keep it a little on the light side for these clouds. Let me just try this. Hmm, um, a touch more blue I think. So you can see just a slight difference in the blue there now, only very slightly. And just on the bottom of that cloud, just kind of flick it and flick the brush around, move it into the dark side of the cloud. And then I'm going to soften it back into that light blue behind, see? Round in circles and soften it away. So the same again with this one. Put a bit of shadow on the back of that, down underneath and soften it back. And we do the same on these ones. Just a little hint along the bottom look and almost horizontal then at the horizon. Okay. So, with that done, let's take a soft brush. Where is my blender brush? Okay, blender brush, blender brush, where are you? There it is. No, soft blender brush. I'm going to soften those very gently. Now I'm going to leave the outside edge of the cloud there, okay? The bright side. And I'm going to kind of flick at a slight curve down into the cloud. Look, and off into the distance then. Soften the bottom, down, there we go. Soften it back. There. How was that? Nice simple clouds. Okay, nice simple cloud in the sky. Now, if you want to brighten it, you can. So if you wanted to add a touch of bright colour to that cloud, just take a clean dry brush, let's take some white. And let's add a touch of white to the bright side of the clouds. And we put one here in front just to push it back. See? And I'm just kind of being very sort of messy with my brush. I'm kind of just kind of flicking it around. Just dabbing it here and there. Does that make sense? No. That'll do fine. That's our sky done. Nice simple sky. Next we have a castle, don't we? I'll do the castle next. And let me see now. Brushes, brushes, what will I use? Hmm, I could actually stick with this. Let's stick with this, yes? Let's dampen it very slightly, just with the corner. So it's barely wet now, it's hardly wet at all. And I'm going to take some blue. And I need to get more blue. I'm not out of blue. So, some blue for that. I'm going to mix up basically now a nice simple grey. Let's take a little black, a little blue. And some white. And I want to warm it slightly then, with a touch of red. Just a touch. Now let me just try that. Okay, that's not bad. Um, I'm thinking to tone that down very slightly. I'm going to take a touch of Naples yellow. So, pull it down. Lean hard on your brush. That'll give you a nice crisp line. Okay. So we'll fill this in. Right across the top there. And I'm working on quite a quite thin. This is quite a kind of a thin mix. 
and the reason I'm doing that is so that my thicker colours will stick better afterwards. So I'm just mixing a nice warm grey now. Black, little red. Let's actually take a touch of burnt sienna. We could kind of change the tone very slightly in there. So I'm adding colours to it as I go. Okay. Now I'm going to switch brushes. Let me have a look at my brushes here. Okay, a nice flat brush, right? There we go, nice little edge on this brush. And I'm going to um, go into some Naples yellow. I'm going to take a touch of cadmium red and a touch of burnt sienna. Let's try that with some white. And I'm going to just, from the top, pull that colour down gently, look. Here and there. So I'm just adding some sunlight to the castle. See? And giving it some texture at the same time. Again, um, let's go down here and take some of this pinky colour we had earlier. Uh, pink will always warm something up, won't it? So I always add a touch of pink into buildings, that type of stuff, and it really warms everything up. So then, because we have trees coming along here, there's going to be some shadow. You see the shadow just there. So I'm going to take some blue and some red. Nice rich colour look, nice rich kind of a purpley grey colour. And Let's put that in, okay? It's probably a bit red. Let's take more blue. And in fact, let's take a touch of black as well, look. So I've got a brush on edge, and I'm just flicking it down like that, just softening it in here and there. Giving some texture. So the bottom of the castle will always be much dirtier than the top, won't it? More blue, more black. And let's get nice and dark down here. So I'm just putting little flicks of paint onto this now, that's all. See? Small little dabs with the brush. How's that looking? Coming on nicely now, isn't it? Now, I will take a touch of burnt umber. I'm going to add a little couple of dabs of burnt umber down in there. And I'm letting all the colour mix on the canvas. There, see, and I'm just creating a bit of texture, that's all. So that'll do for the bright side of the castle. Now let's work on the shadow. So for the shadow, I'm just going to dampen my brush very, very, very lightly. And I'm going to take some blue, some black. And let's keep more blue along with this. And let's try this. Flies. And the, and the door is sure you're open, you see, and there's little bees and flies coming in. I hope you don't mind. I don't mind. Right, dark side. And that's a nice dark side done there. Um, again, at the bottom, let's darken it right up. So let's take some black and some burnt umber. And put some nice, rich darks down there and I'm just wiggling my brush, the tip of my brush, softening it in.
All right. Now, we don't want a crisp line. You see the way we have a kind of a crisp edge on that. I, I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is just take a little blue, tiny bit of blue, and I'm just going to go along that edge, and I'm going to sort of soften the two together very, very gently, just with the tip of my brush. Now, you can even use your blender brush for this as well, if you like. There. You see, it just kind of takes the, the harsh edge off of the light and dark where they join. You see, it does, it, it does help. <coughs> now, we have an extra section on the top of this here, which I want to put in. So I'm just going to take some grey again and it comes across like this cuts down doesn't it and it stops about here <coughs> and I'm just going to soften this that so I'm going to move to a small brush this time uh, a small pointy brush for a little detail. Small pointy synthetics or sable brush, whatever you have. Anything with a point will do fine, okay? And let's just, I'm gonna dampen that. And I'm gonna take some blue and a little black. And there's a shadow on the side of this. So I'm going to put in. And we have a dark line underneath here. So it's kind of casting a slight shadow. And then I'm going to just suggest a couple of little bits of detail on the castle. Just, you know, little stones and whatnot. Now will I zoom in here for you? I think I should. There. Now you can see that better, can't you? I love zooming into something. It's great seeing everything kind of up close, isn't it? So look, I'm just, with the point of the brush, suggesting just a couple of little bricks here and there. Nothing too fancy. Um, okay, let's take a touch of brown. We have some little... I don't know what you call them, but they're on every castle, aren't they? they come down like that. And we have some on the top. So these ones are kind of casting a little shadow. There we go. And clean my brush again. Then let's pick up some bright colour. So some Naples yellow, a little red and lots of white. So again a nice kind of sunlit colour. So we have a little touch here and there, just catching the sun. And of course here we have some catching the sun as well. It's just a little suggestion, that's all. And on the back we have some sunlight coming down here also. And then with this brush even, with some light colour. Look, let's add some hints of detail just here and there on the castle. Okay, just like so. Just by flicking the brush down. I mean, you know, we're not painting anything in particular, we're just kind of giving the castle a bit of texture, I think. Texture is, I think, the word, the key word. See? That's all. It just kind of helps it, doesn't it? So I'm going to lighten just like that, just slightly there, because it's a little dark still, isn't it? And we have a little piece up here, don't we? I'm 
I'm going to just fill that in as well. And then take some dark, put some dark behind it. So all the shadows on the right hand side. Okay. Now we have some windows on the castle. So simply just take some black and a little vertical mark. Does not be perfect. Remember it's a castle so the windows are old and wonky and all sorts of things. Three little windows and there's a couple on this side as well I believe. Just put a hint of a few there and then you could just add more little bricks and all sorts of stuff. Now I want to add a little light with a clean brush again a little light to one side of that window. So let's say the light is coming down here and catching just a little. So now we have the basic castle done. Next we have a little piece in front of that so I'm just going to mix a lighter colour. So take a little lighter colour and let's see now if we can put that in front. Touch of blue perhaps and yes let's just go for it what the heck what's, so what can, what can go wrong if we make a mess we can fix it there we are and we have some more next to that so this is now going to have a dark as well I'm going to take another round a slightly bigger round and I'm going to mix some dark colour for that so again, blue, black, a little bit of red. Soften that across. Let's take some brown even. And then we can do the same with this one here. Give a little cap on that. But it'll be darker down one side. Take some black, a little burnt cyanide with that even. There. And soften that down. Now some lights, let's get some light on this. Some cobalt blue with some white. And let's take a touch of red. So I'm working wet into wet and it can be tricky working wet into wet like this but I like the effect it gives. It does have a nice kind of a soft effect. Okay, small brush. We get some detail done inside this. We have a little cap here, we have a little window just here. I'm just going to do one side of the window and we have a little one at the other side here and a little dark cap on the top of that and let's take some blue and a little shadow down the bottom there. So these two parts of the castle are pretty much kind of side by side, if you understand what I mean. So it's kind of difficult to separate them, if you know what I mean. Okay, no. Right, that'll do fine. Now we have some windows on that front one. I'll take some brown and some black and I'll just put a little window here window there. Again I'm just simplifying all of this now. The main focus really of the tutorial is I suppose the trees. 
that's the main kind of purpose I believe. Now, a little light on this again. A little hint of it there. What a number of these flies. Okay, let's just stand back now and take a look at this. Let's zoom back out and see how we're doing. So there. That's not, not half bad now, is it? Okay, three. So for the greens, I am going to take a brush, just any old regular flat brush, just like this. And I'm going to make some very dark green so for this, all right? And we'll work our lights on top. So I'm going to mix it quite thin, uh, well, not too thin. I'm just going to damp my brush, dry it on the tissue so it's damp, but it's not very, very wet, okay? And I'm going to take some black, come up here, get some black in the center here, and lots of yellow, cadmium yellow pale. And let me just take a tiny, tiny bit more turpentine, just a tiny, tiny bit. And we could even take, now we could take some blue, but that might make it a bit cooler. I want to keep it warm. So black and yellow. Let's try that. So let's just cover all of this with nice dark colour. And you can see how kind of wet that is. So let's thicken it up a bit with some paint. Some yellow, some black, and this makes a lovely rich colour. In fact, let's take some burnt umber as well. I'm going to hold the top of that now because that knocking will drive me crazy. So, let's fill all this in here with this nice dark green. I hope you can all see that okay. And now I'm only doing the rough outline of the trees. I'm not worried about doing little leaves and stuff like that because I can do that with the lighter colour. So I just want to get this nice and covered. I cut in front of the castle just a little. Let's take some more burnt umber and we we'll go in front of the castle down here with that. So bring it down to that line. So now we have a relatively dark green there. Let's do the same on that side. So I'm just going to dampen the corner of my brush again. If you feel there's too much turpentine on a brush, just dab the corner of it on a piece of tissue and that will take off the bulk of the turpentine. Let's take some more black, some more yellow, and this time let's go for some cyanide, burnt cyanide, a little bit of that. And let's get in these bunches of trees here. Just very roughly now, don't be trying to paint trees as if they were finished. I'm just filling in the bulk here, that's all I'm doing. And again, I'll cut in front of this side of the castle as well. So let's cut in front of that, down in front like so, and bring that right across there. Now, that's our base finished. So I think now, next, I want to bring this a bit higher, I think this should go a bit higher here. And also this one. And I want to make a nice big bush here. Take some more of that colour. Okay, like so. And I'm just going to give this a wipe on my tissue. And then, I'm going to start putting some real dark colours into this. So I'm going to take some blue and some black and a touch of brown thick paint now, no thinners and come right down here right down into the bottom of these trees here so I just want to darken this corner so I'm going to go for some more black a touch of blue and my black is gone, I need some black and I might need a little blue also so I'm going to put some more of that on my palette. So this is a nice easy scene for you to try. And uh, you know, it gives you lots of practice on trees. Okay, um, some black, little blue. Come over here and we put that down the bottom. 
I like to put the dark rich colours down at the bottom because that gives some depth into the trees then, especially the bottom of the trees where it meets the grass. Alright, a little bit there on the back of that tree, a little bit on the back of that tree and you can see now how all the colours are very wet and kind of working all the colours into each other. And I'll put a nice dark colour along the ends here. Just dab it in here and there. So now we're getting there, aren't we? So what I'm going to do now with this brush is I'm just going to dab that dark colour into the lighter green colour. Just kind of create some texture, so some leaves, that kind of thing. Because I don't, because I don't want to leave brush strokes on the, the trees. So I'm just going over everything now with this brush. Just dab, 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 dab. Look, just very gently here and there. Now, that'll do fine. Um, yep, that looks good. So my next job is to work some light colours into this. Now I could use the same brush, but it's quite, mm, I don't know, it's not the kind of the shape I'm looking for on the brush. I'm just going to look at some of my brushes here and let me see if I can find one that might suit us for what we want. Okay, this doesn't look too bad. Um, we could use our big green stubby brush if you wanted, or perhaps even the medium one. Let me have a look at this now. Um, hmm. So many brushes to choose from. Look, I'll use, to start with, I might use this one perhaps for some of the big trees. And I'll use this one for some of the smaller trees, okay? Um, this green stubby brush here. I might use that for some of the smaller trees. So let's try this on some of them. Now, a dry brush. Let's take some, now don't be shy, don't be afraid of this. Let's take some cadmium yellow. And let's take a touch of burnt cyanide. And we could even just try that on its own. So you can see now I have the top of the very tip of the brush loaded with paint. Okay? And let's try it. So the sun is coming from this side. So I'm going to put the lights on the left hand side of these trees. Let's just try this. And I'm kind of leaning down on the corner of the brush. And then I'm going to soften it back into the dark colour. Like so. Okay, makes sense. Take a bit of natal gel off of this one. There we are. And let's go back in again. And let's pick up a little bit of this. So I think for the smaller trees, I might use a smaller brush. Now this is getting dirty, so I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna give this a quick wipe on the tissue, just the tip of it, okay? Just one, two, and take off that dirty color. Let's take some burnt cyanide this time with a little white, and a touch of yellow on that. And let's go over here, and I'm just dabbing left and right, you see? Dab, 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 dab. And this is just the first step. I'm just come down here and create another bush in front of that. And this green stubby brush is fantastic, you see? It just gives you lots of natural looking foliage. Let's take some cadmium yellow again and let's go with some more burnt cyanide. Let's add some nice autumn tones in there. And I suppose the thing is not to dab on the same area for too long because it will get very, very messy and muddy. So let's try cadmium yellow with some of the white. And let's come over here and try it on some of the tips of these. So the sun is coming down and just kind of catching just here and there on these ones. Okay, 
and let's go back into that so you can see now I'm just creating some nice texture just dabbing along here and there and already we have some lovely trees now I'm going to go further than that um, let me get some yellow on my palette some nice cadmium yellow pale hue so there we go a nice dollop of that and I'm going to switch brushes and I think I'll go with the first brush I used for the castle this kind of worn out flat one you see it's kind of very worn out and splayed let's take some cadmium yellow and a good dollop of white so a very light colour and you see the way it's all opened okay let's try this just here and there on these when I get some of that lighter colour and this brush now I don't think is doing it for me it's not giving me the effect I want so I might switch um, I think it's just not kind of worn the way I would like it to be so I'm going to try another brush let me have a look I have a huge selection hmm you just get different effects to see with every brush you use now you could try a fan brush also if you wanted um, that would give you some nice results ok I'm going to try a couple look I have a few different brushes here let's try this one first uh, let's get some cadmium yellow some burnt cyanide some white and that's probably a bit flat but look we can try it let's just try it huh, not too bad not too bad at all um, I'll come down here and try a bit on that now would you like me to zoom in on this or is it ok? it's ok is it? because I want you to see me mixing as well now I might try a different brush um, try a slightly smaller one let's take some cyanide into that a good dollop of white and we get some autumn colours going on this and gently softening everything back into the darker colour now some burnt sienna on its own add a few dabs of that here and there yeah, give it a bit of colour and let's put some white with some cadmium yellow pale and just go along here just along the edge of this one ok now I'm going to go back to this because I, I just get a nice feeling from this brush cadmium yellow with some white you know yourself when you, when you have a brush that just kind of works for you and it gives you the effects that you want and if that's the brush that works for you then you use that brush ok um, let me go over here I might take a touch of blue this time for that side right and soften that back in then. now give it a clean then go back into it again So, okay, let's get some bits of tree trunks, bits of branches, that type of thing, yes? Small brush, small pointy little brush, anyone you have at all will do just fine. And let's 
going to some burnt umber a little black make that nice and watery with plenty of turpentine and let's go up here and put a couple of twigs just coming out of the trees so just here and there couple of little wiggles that's all okay and let's indicate one or two inside of the trees here look a couple of little dabs here and there it just gives you the impression of those little tree trunks just sticking out here and there and I suppose we could do one or two over on this side there we go and let's put a little hint of light on those with some of this whitey yellowy colour that we used earlier remember I'm only going for an impression ok, that's all so let's have a quick look at that, see how we're looking yeah it looks pretty good doesn't it ok let's move on to our grass big brush again I'm going to just dampen it very very slightly and I'm going to go and pick up lots of yellow on this there we go, so lots of cadmium yellow with a hint of that black that's a hint and push that on with a nice big brush Try some Naples yellow and doing this on picking up dry colours from the palette, okay? And give it a little wiggle as well. Dampen my brush again, very slightly just with the corner. Take some Naples yellow, try some burnt cyanide. Let's go with that, see what that gives us. Some nice warm colours. Um, let's fix up some burnt umber. Let's try that. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same, does it? And let's pick up some blue. A little blue, a little black. And let's go right down here and get some dark colours in here. Look at that, now that's dark, isn't it? It's a nice rich colour. Blend all that together. There we go. Um, again, a bit of black down here. Stand back, have a quick look, see what you think, and then, okay, let's let's start putting in some darks, shall we? So I'm going to add a little dark just up here, and I'm going to soften it, and pull it down gently across there, just like that, okay? And look, I'm even going to soften it into the bottom of the trees. That gives it a little nice effect doesn't it then let's go for some texture let's take a fan brush uh, let me see let me see let me see I have a nice little fan brush here a simple fan brush take some cadmium yellow some of the white and let's get some nice dramatic light now coming across here so very simply with this colour Dab, 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 dab. Very gently. All the way across. And it's then going to disappear into the dark over here, okay? I'm just dabbing, that's all. It's just to create a little texture on the grass, that's all. That's all I'm trying to achieve. To make it look nice and kind of rough, okay? So, soften it up into the dark, look. Nice and soft. And we can put some flicks here and there. Now 
Let's take some burnt umber and burnt sienna as well. And put some of that in. So there could be brown leaves falling to the ground from a nearby tree or something like that. Let's just have a bit of fun. So when I'm painting, you see, I'm not just think, focusing on this image. There could be something outside of the painting also influencing this image. So another tree, perhaps, or a shadow from another tree. In fact, that's what I might show you. So I'll put in a shadow from another tree. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, let me just clean my fan brush and I'll take some more yellow. Just a little, because I'm almost finished. Let's take some black, little touch of yellow, so we make a very, very dark green again. Touch of blue. Okay, let's imagine does it actually, because the shadow is coming from the sun, which is on the left, okay, the sun is casting a shadow across this way. So let's put a shadow in the cross here. So let's imagine there's a tree somewhere outside of the photo here and it's casting a shadow right across this ground here. Yeah. Okay, and I'm kind of moving it to the direction of that ground, okay? The ground is sort of sweeping upwards very gently. So I'm going to move it like that, nice and gently. Then it's going to just sort of disappear into the grass. There, how is that? I just put some little dark colours here and there. See, it gives a bit of texture, doesn't it? Now, I'm going to put in a couple of little dabs of colour here and there. So let's just imagine there's a few little flowers here and there dotted around, look. A couple of little dabs of yellow. Alright. Have a bit of fun. And let's take some Cadmium red. Some red flowers as well. Just here and there. Now I'm going to take that light colour and just suggest a couple of little light branches here and there. How are we looking? Yes? So we have some nice light now coming across the grass, don't we? I think we need one or two birds. Let's stick a bird in there, shall we? There's a lot of crows out around here. Out around the castle. One, two, three. And last but not least, we must sign, don't we? Don't ever forget to sign your name. That's your painting, and everyone will know it. S. Conway. And then, we have a frame, don't we? So let me bring this back here now so you can see it, just a little bit. Let's stick a frame on it. As they say, here's one I made earlier. And there we are. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? So let me zoom in now for you, just give you a quick look. So there. Nice simple castle. Some nice simple trees. Some texture, 
on the floor and that's it so there we go isn't that lovely oh no what was that for you? Let me turn the camera here now and you can see me. Again, you can look down on me. There we go. Okay. Job done. Wasn't that lovely? Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you got some nice hints and tips about trees um, and creating some texture around the grass. Again, a fan brush. Simple as that. A simple fan brush. Dab, 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 dab. Job done. Keep it simple. Try not to be painting every single blade of grass. You can if you like. And that's brilliant, but I just tend to kind of keep it, you know, natural and free, have a bit of fun. Um, so go and get your paints, get a bit of canvas, have a go. Um, send me your work if you're painting along with me. I'd love to see how you're doing. Send it to me at stephenconway12 at gmail.com. Um, yes, I'd love to see it. And thank you very, very much for all your support, your lovely comments. Um, you're really giving me encouragement to keep going you know get better and better and better all the time and give you better tutorials as well so thank you for your lovely comments um, thank you for all your support on patreon as well thank you to all my patrons you're so kind and uh, if you want brushes just email me at stephencolman12 at gmail.com i will get them brushes to you they're really great brushes especially the big one that's probably the more popular one i think um, so yeah let's uh, get painting I will see you again very, very soon. Thank you for watching and God bless.